Welcome, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. There's an outpouring of abundance, of abundance, new doors have been opened. It is green, a new grace has been released. The glory, the glory of the latter is greater than the former. The blessing is here, it's all here. Lift up your hands, come on. The glory of the latter is greater than the former. The blessing is here. It's all here. All here. There's another flow. Welcome, everybody. Good evening. You are welcome to this session um, of the Winning in Parenting Conference. Uh, that started today, and we have had two amazing sessions so far. I mean, you know, this is what the, this conference is actually about. You know, it's a gathering of parents. You know, we come together to glean premium value as it relates to parenting, because parenting today is not a walk in the park, and we need all the supports we can get. This is actually the third uh, in the, the series of the Winning in Parenting Conference, and it's been nothing short of amazing. We've had two great sessions today, and we are on to the third session, the last session for tonight. And we have somebody that is so dear to me, all right, that will be speaking to us tonight. She's loved by a lot of people on Instagram, of course. If you like food, you must be her friend. <laughs> And not just food, if you like healthy food. Yes, yeah, so I have with me here this evening, Auntie Rayo, like I fondly call her, Lagos housewife. She'll be talking to us this evening about how we can raise, you know, um, healthy families, especially in today's world. Like I said, uh, as we're ending the last session, so many things are happening today. It's a very fast paced world that we live Living and then uh, as a result of that, we take so many things for granted. And so uh, she's going to be sharing with us uh, framework strategies, you know, skills on how we can actually provide the right nutrition for our families. So I would just go ahead to um, show us her profile and then I'll bring her in. Rayo Ahemokai is the face behind the Lagos Housewife brand. Lagos Housewife started out as just a social media account where Raya posted pictures of her home-cooked meals for her family and school lunch packs for her son. But in eight years, it has grown to become a formidable community of women and men online on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, telegram and email subscription to offline on mom's cafe a weekly gathering of women currently on hold due to the pandemic from different walks of life who are committed and passionate about living a complete healthy lifestyle using the abundance of foods spices and herbs we have been so blessed with and taking advantage of the kitchen gadgets technology has made possible. On her Lagos Housewife YouTube channel, Raya teaches eat natural and live healthy recipes. She teaches the word every Wednesday at 9 p.m. about God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, and victorious living. Lagos Housewife is all about Jesus, family, 
food and business which encompasses all that is needed to be whole in life, faith, relationships, health, and wealth. To learn how to live a fulfilled and healthy family life and cook without seasoning cubes or processed ingredients, follow Lagos Housewife on social media. Ryo Ahemohai. Whoa, 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 whoa. You, you are welcome, ma'am. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It's so good to have you with us this evening. Um, so I'm not going to take, um, I know I have eaten into your time, and we need to collect all the info that you have brought for us today. So I'm just going to leave you in the studio so that you can get to it. Okay. Thank, Thank you so you, much. Um, Thank uh, you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. It's a pleasure and a honor, a privilege. And thank you. So, so that we can get started fast, let's jump right into it. Father, we bless you. We thank you. We give you the glory. This is another opportunity, Lord, for your children to receive from you, to learn from you. My Father, my God, I ask that as everything is proceeding, you, Lord, will take preeminence in every way. That we will not take the glory for ourselves, but we will answer to you in everything in Jesus' name. Speak of yourself, Lord. Holy Spirit, teach us the right words to speak. Help me to speak from you and not from myself. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed and received. Amen. Amen. So thank you, everyone. I'm so glad to be able to speak to you today on how to keep your family healthy in today's world. And a lot of people will ask, why today's world? Because uh, it's like, okay, there has always been issues with health over time and everything. But I tell people there is no time in the whole of history that knowledge, scientific knowledge has been as high as this. And at the same time, there has been no time in the history of the world where we are actually grappling with so many health issues as we are right now. Both old sicknesses, new sicknesses are just like colliding. So many things we've never experienced before. Just recently, I think about three or four days ago, I was reading uh, in the news that for the first time, uh, plastic, uh, what do they call it? Plastic elements were found in breast milk. Something that had never been found before. Why? Because there's so much plastic in the atmosphere. We are literally inhaling it and now it has found its way into breast milk. I don't think anyone needs to tell us that we are dealing with new things right now. New things, as in it's, it's kind of mind-boggling, the, the many health issues that keep arising. And we see uh, diseases that were formerly classified as old people's diseases. We are now seeing young children. I'm talking of teenagers even. We're not even talking of people in their 30s or 40s anymore. We're talking of teenagers having these same issues. I, it's something we all need to take seriously. Now, I believe we're all believers. So we need to understand that we do not only see things physically, we should also see things from the spiritual angle. And I remember early this year, uh, you know, when we just entered the year 2022 and, you know, I was praying, seeking the face of the Lord and the Lord told me something. He said there are three areas the enemy will attack most in the lives of everyone, not just believers. It said three areas. It said the areas of health, the areas of finance, and the and families. He said these three things, family, health, finance, will, will be the brunt of the enemy's attack. And we're seeing a lot of it. You hear of someone today, oh, he was just walking, he collapsed and died. We hear of, or sometimes we hear of sicknesses, and people are soliciting for funds, selling their properties. And by the time they've spent everything, you hear the person, the person died. 
and you're seeing families trained by health issues, grappling with so much, and not only with health issues, families being attacked. This year, I, I know a lot of people we look up to to be samples of good marriages. We have been hearing news, oh, we've decided to go our separate ways and everything. I don't think anyone needs to tell us that at this time we are facing severe attacks from the enemy. But this is not to make us afraid. The Bible says, let us not be ignorant of the, any, uh, of the devices of the enemy. Ignorance is not, will not protect. Knowledge will protect. Because here's the thing, when you, when you have been forewarned of something, then you can prepare yourself for that thing. But unfortunately, a lot of us are still taking the aspect of health lightly. I, I mean, we focus more on things concerning money. It's important. Please don't let anybody tell you money is not important. But when you divert attention to so much to money, to the detriment of your health, please do not forget that all it takes is one sickness and all that money that has been piled up can depreciate in one single day. Because I don't think there's anyone who will have millions stored somewhere and will be facing a sickness, a disease, a, a, an issue, a health issue, who will not immediately begin to pump that money they have into it. So it was one of the things the Lord told me, that the issue of health will be a, a tool in the hands of the enemy to attack and to... It, it will be one of the things he will use to deplete money. It will be one of the things he will use to... Uh, cause issues in families and the lord said teach my people how to take care of their health now you know we talk a lot about food let me just tell you there are two major ways to take care uh two major biblical things that your health depends on number one what you eat, and number two, the word of God. That's why Jesus told those people, man shall not live by bread alone, meaning food. Man shall not live by food alone, but by every word from the mouth of the Lord. Now, when he says food alone, it doesn't mean food is exempted. It means food is included. And when the Lord was teaching me about health, he said two things that will protect your health. The food you eat, and the, and the words you stand on. Where does the aspect of food come in? There's this spiritual principle that actually says what a thing is made of, made of is what it will take to sustain that thing. So, number one, our spirit is by the breath of God. So it is sustained by the word of God. Number two, our bodies are made from the earth. The body will be sustained by the earth. Meaning when you take things that are not from the earth, that are not from nature, that are not grown from the earth, you are actually not giving your body what it takes to sustain it. I'm just giving you this preamble so that you will understand why eating healthy is important and what exactly is that eating healthy. Let me just break it down to you. Is Eating healthy is basically eating as close to nature as possible. When you are taking all these lab-grown, lab-manufactured things, that is not what the earth is made of so your body is from the earth your body must be sustained by the earth there was literally an example the lord gave me he said uh i i have uh like herbs that i grow inside inside uh earthenware pots and you know with sand and everything i have uh curry leaves or oregano and so on so he there was a time the oregano branch, there was a branch that fell off from the oregano, this thing, it's kind of tilted off. So I broke it off, and as I broke it off, I stuck it back inside the flower pot, inside the sand. I stuck it there, 
and I was watering it and it just started growing again. So there was a day I went there and I was about to water it and the Holy Spirit started speaking to me. He said, I said, he said, why did this branch that you broke off, why did it grow again? I said, because I put it in the earth. He said, yes, but why? Okay, I didn't know that. And that was when he said, he said, it comes from the earth. It is nourished by the earth. He said, look at animals. Every single one of them is nourished by the earth. You see even dogs sometimes. They'll be picking leaves, even cats. They'll be picking leaves and eating and everything. He said, for as long as you are connected to what you were made of, you will be sustained by it. He said, everything else in nature understands this except my children. He said, they are the only ones who do not understand that they are nourished by nature, from nature, from the earth. He said, and so the the greater the distance between you and the earth, the greater the health issues you will face. We are nurtured by the things grown from the earth we feed on. Many of us cannot even remember the last time our feet, our bare feet touched bare sand. We are so used to walking on tiled and tired and everything. And we're going out, we wear shoes, we wear slippers. We don't even walk barefooted. I was reading recently, uh, no, not reading, I, I follow this page on Instagram. It's a woman whose husband had an accident and he had a spinal cord injury and everything. And the doctors told him he would never walk again. And so... He was in wheelchair and then she said she she came across this nature community this nature community where all they do is natural and everything and there was she said there was an old woman there who was telling her that the body can literally heal itself if you give it the right environment to heal itself he said the whole body and she said she learned from this woman and then they sold their house and they bought a land far, far, far away from civilization. They bought a land there. Far away from civilization. And they started growing their own food on land that had not been tainted. They started drinking water from the spring. They, as in so many things, they changed everything. And you know, in three years, her husband was walking again. In three years, her husband was walking again. And now she's a passionate advocate of nature. Of course, it was not just about, say, growing natural food and everything. She learned about herbs, how to combine herbs. The one to, as in, it, it's amazing. I follow her on Instagram. It, it's amazing. I learned so much from her. And she was like, many of the things we we eat they are killing us they are killing us that even when we fall sick she said this body god has created is so superior is so strong it's capable of healing itself but it does not have the right environment the right tools to heal we keep damaging it more with what we eat more and more the greatest enemy to our health is overly processed foods and i tell people this you have no business drinking minerals none at all none at all sugar overly processed sugar do you know something ah there's a woman i also follow on instagram she uh she recently wrote wrote a book she's a scientist she's actually uh, a, 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 she did chemistry, food science, and then she worked with a, with a, with a, a lab that studies the effect of food on people. In fact, they came up with this thing that they implanted in the human body. They asked for donation for volunteers and everything. So the people volunteered and they implanted these things in their body. And what they were doing was, well, they were monitoring 
how their body reacts to different kinds of food. And do you know the number one thing they discovered, which is scientific, it has been scientifically proven. This is not just about spiritual. They said they discovered that there is nothing sweet in nature that exists without fiber. There is nothing created by nature, sweet, that is sweet, that doesn't have fiber. But we human beings, we strip away the fiber and we take only the sweet things. They said that's the greatest damage to the body. Sweet things without fiber. That is sugar, that is minerals, that is fruit juice, even if it's natural fruit juice. I was telling someone recently, I said even natural fruit juice, when you strip it of fiber, you are doing damage to your body. It's supposed to be eaten with fiber. Every sweet thing God created comes with fiber. Why are we removing the fiber? The, the mastermind knew what he was doing. And then they discovered when you take sweet things without fiber, it causes inflammation, whether you are diabetic or not. This, they found out it applied to every single person in the world, whether they are diabetic and, or not. It causes sugar spike in the body. And they said, while the sugar spikes, that is the time the health of the body, the body is at its lowest immune, as in the immunity is the lowest during sugar spike. So if the if a person comes in contact with a sickness at that time, before the body is able to regulate, now, if you are not diabetic, the body will regulate itself after that sugar spike. It will still end up regulating. So no problem. It's people who are diabetic that have issues with reg self-regulating. But people who are not diabetic, you will have the sugar spike, but the body will regulate. But they say while that sugar spike is on, the body's immune system is seriously low. And that is the time we are most vulnerable to so many things. Now, over time, when this keeps happening, there's sugar spike, the body regulates, there's sugar spike, the body regulates. There. What is happening is the body is going through inflammation. Even though your body is now self-regulating, there's still inflammation in the body. And over time, this causes health issues, causes problems to the gut, causes sicknesses the immune system is compromised the person is no longer healthy difficulty in sleeping well constant headaches a higher increase of cancer higher increase of any inflammation caused disease high blood sugar high blood pressure so many things these are scientifically researched i bought her book i bought her book and i spent time i bought both the book and the audio book, and I listened to it this way. These are backed with scientific research. And I was like, my God, what is this? Every time you take in anything sweet without fiber, there is a sugar spike in the body. And it is causing inflammation to the body. And she said something profound. She said the fact that you are not sick does not mean you are healthy. She said there are a lot of unhealthy people in the world. She said, right now, I think they have over, uh, I think about 90,000 volunteers from all over the world who have that implant. And they are co constantly monitoring how their body is reacting. And she said one thing they discovered is the fact that the fact that you are not sick does not mean you are not you are healthy. No. She said there are a lot of unhealthy people in the world based on their findings said the issue is that because they are not visibly sick, they think they are healthy. She said, but these are the people most prone to danger because they just drop dead one day. One day, the body just can't take it anymore and they just drop. And they'll be like, they don't know what happened. This person just collapsed and died. She said, no, something had been happening to the body long before. They just didn't know it. She said, in fact, the people who are visibly sick are the lucky ones because if they are visibly sick, they can now take steps to correct it. Say, but people who are not visibly sick, they do not even know this damage is going on in their body. By the time they find out, it's too late. And I was like, wow, Father Lord. What is this? 
you see the importance of eating healthy. And the sons of the prophet told Elijah, there is death in the pot. I've done a teaching before, death in the pot. And I ask people, is there death or life in your pot? What food are you giving your children? Are you setting up them for life or for death? What are you feeding yourself? What are you feeding your family? Is there death in your pot or life in your pot? A lot of people think, oh, I have a lot of time on my hands. That's why I can do these meals that, that I do and everything. No, it's not that I have a lot of time. It's that I have priorities. My family's health trumps everything, everything else. That's just it. It's priority I have. It's not that I have the time. Everybody has the same 24 hours. What you give those 24 hours to shows what is important to you. I have chosen what is important to me, the life and health of my family. So I'm asking you, what is your priority? What and I've, what are the things we should be eating? Now, it doesn't necessarily mean homemade. You understand? It, but it does mean, even if it's not being homemade, you need to be sure of the person who is cooking your, your children's meals. You need to be sure. Even if you are someone who orders meals, please make sure you are ordering it from people who are using the right ingredients. People who are not cutting corners. You understand? Just make sure of that. And please cut out unhealthy things for your children. In fact, I tell people, I said a child has no business taking any sweets, uh, sugar substitutes, no matter how healthy, until after the age of two. Don't get your child used to taking sweet things. This one that you say you make their cereal, you are using date syrup. Date syrup might be healthier than uh, uh, overly processed sugar but the fact of the matter is you are already changing their taste buds and you are letting them identify pleasure with the taste of sweetness don't do that to them don't add any sweetener at all to their foods till after the age of two why? because you need to get them used to the natural taste of food I remember uh, when I uh, when the Lord started teaching me about eating healthy and everything, and I would eat some things and it would just taste so terrible to me, and I'll be like, "What is all this now? She natural food cannot be sweet again." And the Lord told me, "He said your your taste buds have been damaged. You need to rebuild them." And that's what a lot of us are doing to our children right now. We are damaging their taste buds. We are making it used to the taste of processed food, making it used to the taste of sweet food without fiber, making it used to the taste of artificial food. We are damaging it. I had to relearn. I had to relearn to regroom my taste buds. Now, there was a day I, 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 uh, someone gave me, she said, oh, this is a natural juice and everything. And I sipped it, and immediately I felt nausea, as in, and I said, I don't know what this is. This is not natural at all. This is not natural. Because you know why? My taste buds have been, have been how will I put it? I've resurrected. I've been restored back to their natural taste. It didn't happen all at once. It took discipline. In fact, there was a time the, uh, the Holy Spirit told me that there was this herb. He told me the herb. And he said, I should be making it as tea every morning. It should be the first thing I take every morning. So I got it. The first time I made it, as I drank it, I was like, ew, this thing is horrible. And I poured it down the sink. I washed the cup. I was like, I'm not drinking that at all. The Holy Spirit left me. I, went, I washed the cup. I put it back. As I was going inside to go and lie down, he said, go back and make it and drink it. I said, ha. Huh. He said, go back, make it and drink it. I went back, I drank it. I was like, oh, this thing is horrible. But do you know the funny thing? In a matter of like 21 days, 
it didn't even take up to 21 days. I think about one week, I adjusted to the taste. Two weeks, I liked the taste. By 21 days, it tasted good in my mouth. It tasted sweet in my mouth. I could not believe it was the same thing. And the Holy Spirit told me, yeah, you reactivated the natural taste buds. And then I was taking that thing every day, every day, every day. And finally, there was a day I met someone who was killed in the knowledge of herbs and everything. And she's a believer too. And I started gisting with her. And I said, the Holy Spirit told me to be taking this thing. And I said, I don't even know why. But I've been taking it and I've been taking it. And she laughed and she said, this God is so amazing. She said, you know what that herb does? He said, when you have recovered from a sickness, something like diabetes or 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 cancer, or something, when you have recovered, not when you are still in treatment, when you are no more diabetic, when you are no more, uh, when you no more have cancer, he said that herb, what it does, it, it restores every damage the, the body has undergone. So it's like, it regrows your cells. That's what it does. And I was like, wow, this God is so amazing. He has created everything. He has thought of everything and i was like so please please eat as close to nature as possible that's what i'm here to beg you to do eat as close to nature as possible make sure that when you're feeding your children when you're feeding yourself the less processed the better I mean, even ordinary bread you buy. And then please stop using preservatives. Stop using artificial seasonings. Let me tell you something about spices and herbs. They are healing on their own. That's when you will hear, oh, Uziza is good for this. Oh, Efiri is good for this. Oh, this, as in when you include them in your food, they are not just for the food. They are things they are doing in their body. I, I always tell people, you are either nurturing your body or you are killing your body. There can be no two ways about it. You are either nurturing it or you are killing it. Use natural spices. Use natural seasonings. They are things they do in the body. Recently, uh, you know, Myself and my neighbors were very close. Their children are always in and out. My son too is always in and out in their house and everything. And then everybody kind of got uh, flu. And it was a really bad flu, this thing and all that. And, you know, my, uh, my son and I, I was like, oh, oh, this thing. And I was saying, oh, I don't want to have Kata God. I don't want to have this thing because I was already feeling it. And God told me, he said, what are you doing? You're just sitting down complaining. I've given you knowledge. You know what to do. Go do it. And I got up. I went. I got my black seed. I did um, my mixtures and everything. I took it. I gave it to my son. He took it. And you know, by the following morning, all our sniffles were gone. Everything was gone. We still took it that morning and we still took it that evening. And that was the end for us. And I told my neighbor, I said, use this for your children and all that. And they used it. Now there was improvement. But they still had it for a number of days. And I asked the Holy Spirit. I said, how come we had immediate results and they didn't have immediate results? And the Holy Spirit told me something. He said, your body has already been prepared. He said, your body is already healthy. He just needed a little help. He said, you've already been feeding it healthy. You've been taking healthy things. You've not been taking the wrong things. So there was no plenty work for the natural herbs to do. It met a prepared body. So it was able to do its work easily. He said, but for them... They have not been eating healthy. So when the natural herbs went in, it found a whole lot more to deal with. It first had to work on the immune system, work on this, work on that, do this one, before it could even start tackling the flu itself. He said, that's the reason why. And he said, that's why, that's why you need to eat healthy. 
so that even if you fall sick, it will be easy to handle. Have you seen some people when they fall sick and even after they've been treated, it takes them a long time to recover. Even when they recover, they are still so weak. They are still so struggling with everything. It's because the body is not healthy. So it's taking a lot for it to come back. When you see the fact that a child is constantly having catar, constantly having cough, that's, that's telling you this child already has health, healthy eating issues that need to be tackled. That need to be tackled. As in, I can't remember the last time I went to the hospital. The hospital is a good place. This is not me telling you not to go to the hospital. God created medical knowledge, medical science for our good. It helps us. You understand? So go to the hospital for treatment. But I'm telling you that when you are healthy, your need for the hospital reduces. It reduces. What you need to do is check up. You go for regular checkup and everything. It's no more going in and out of hospital because today, if it's not short throat, if it, and I'm someone, I'm telling you, I'm, I understand what it is to be unhealthy. I've been very unhealthy to the point that my daughter's number was on flash dial, as in flash dial. I was always in and out of the hospital. In fact, I had medicine cabinet that was big, medicine chest, all sorts of antibiotics, all sorts of so that immediately the doctor says, Stay, uh, start taking this, start taking this. I'll just go to my cabinet, open it. I had drugs, but now, do you know, even for me to use para, uh, paracetamol, ordinary paracetamol, I have to be asking my neighbor, Please, do you have paracetamol? I don't have any of those things again because I'm healthy. The eating, the food I eat, the things I ingest into my body, feed your children healthy, cut out minerals. Please, there's one thing I will beg you to do. When you want to buy anything, please look at the ingredient list and you will see the things you are feeding your children. You'll see the things you are feeding your children. Tomorrow, my son is taking, uh, uh, what do they call it, to school? A uh, burger with a uh, hot dog, uh, a sausage and everything. Homemade. No single preservative. I just baked the bread. I just baked it now myself. I wrote it to yesterday when I shared the post of uh, the bread and the recipe on my page. I said, I like mixing my flour with healthier, healthier options like millet, like oatmeal, like flax seed, chia seed, sunflower seed, different ones to increase the new uh, fiber and the nutrients. I said, but regardless of what flour you use, it is still better you bake it yourself or you make it at home or buy it from someone who, who makes it with natural ingredients than to buy the commercially available ones. I, I had to snap the picture of a bread, this thing, and I was just looking at it and I was like, what, what is softener? What is improver? What is preservative? What are all these things inside bread? I make bread. I don't use any of those things. Basically, except you want to do a fizzy and be adding butter and everything. What you need for bread is flour, yeast, tiny bit of salt, and oil. Finish. That is the core base to make bread. What is improver? What is preservatives? What is uh, the, I was just reading all sorts on it. I said, what is all this that they are feeding people for everyone's sake? What is all this? Why are you giving your children packaged juice? Why? You, have you made pineapple juice before and you put it on the table and it lasted up to three hours without getting spoiled? But you are buying pineapple juice in the supermarket and they are telling you it's natural. And it has stayed two weeks, three weeks. And they even wrote it on it. Best before 2025. Come on. Come on. Pineapple juice. That will last till 2024, 2025. Come on. And you are feeding it to your children. Stop, please. Stop. 
And you know, there was a time I was in my cooking studio in my kitchen, and as I was just cooking, you know, using this ingredient, uh, using this gadget, using that, the Holy Spirit just asked me. He said, "Why do you think I gave you all these gadgets?" I said, uh, "Because I like them." <laughs> and he laughed. He said, "No, there's more to it than that." He said, "For your effectiveness, to save you time, to help you eat healthier." And so that you can teach other people about it. And he said, for your effectiveness, imagine if you had to be kneading bread constantly by yourself every time. How many times will you be able to bake bread? But with the, with the bread maker, all you have to do is toss in your ingredients, close it, press it, press it, and you walk away. And you come back later, your fresh, piping hot, healthy bread is there. He said, how many of these meals will you be able to cook in an instant if you do not have your air fryer, you do not have this, you do not have that? Do you know many of these kitchen gadgets? I didn't buy them myself. God gave them to me. And there's one thing I know about God. He will never give me something that will hurt me. So that's my confidence in using. There are some kitchen gadgets he has never given me. And I know it's because they are not good for me. There are some I would look at like that and he would tell me, no, don't, don't, don't get that. There are some I have asked him for and he said, no. And I know he has his reasons. But everything I have, I can attest to it because God gave them to me. God is good. God is good. He wants you healthy. He wants your children healthy. Now, I'm going to round up very soon, but I hope I've explained to you. So the, because I've, the issue is not that people don't know what to eat. They really don't understand why they should eat healthy. That's what I'm making it clear to you. That's why I'm making it clear to you. Air fryer, God gave me air fryer. There's blender, there's food processor, there's juice, uh, juicer, there's a uh, uh, bread maker and all those ones. Let me... Uh, explain okay i was about to say i'll round up with this point let me explain something to you also about why we need to be healthy this was taught to me also by the holy spirit you know my calling is actually health and healing that's why you see the teachings from the holy spirit to me is on, is majorly on those points so he told me something he said where that, that place in the Bible that they said, no one pours new wine into old wine skin. He said, many of us do not understand that. It also applies to our body and the Holy Spirit. He said, there's a limit to the power of the Holy Spirit you can carry if you are not physically strong. He said, the Holy Spirit will curtail himself from pouring his power into you. He said, why? Because your body is the vessel. It needs to be strong to take it. He said, no one pours new wine into old wine skin, lest the wine skin bursts. He said, I do not want to kill you. So no matter what I want to do in your life, it can be limited by how healthy you are. He said, I will not pour out my power into a vessel that cannot take that power. And he showed me something in the Bible. He said, Elijah. He said, look at the anointing Elijah had. He said, and yet Elijah was so strong. Okay, so, yeah, okay. So, as I was saying, he said Elijah was so strong, even with the anointing he carried and everything. He didn't die. God took him. He said, now, Elisha, that got double of the anointing. The Bible records that he died of sickness. He said, what happened? Even though we double of Elijah's anointing, Yet he still died of sickness. And the Holy Spirit told me, have you ever thought of that? I said, wow. He said, 
his body could not handle the capacity, the capacity for that level of anointing. He said, but he took that anointing by force. He took that anointing by force and his body had to give up. He said, be healthy, not only for yourself, but for the sake of all those people I want to send you to. For the sake of my kingdom, for the investment I have put on you to send you as my vessel to the world. He said, be healthy. Raise your children to be healthy. God has plans for them. They are chosen of God. Teach them. I tell people, look, I'm, there, I'm, my, son's, I'm my son's parent. I'm his mother. He's not the one to dictate to me what he will eat. I'm the mother. I'm responsible for him. God gave him to me to raise. What excuse will I give God for giving him? God gave me a healthy child. If I return a sick child back to him, what am I going to tell God? God gave me a child of purpose. If what I'm feeding that child destroys him and he's not able to feel that, fulfill that purpose, what am I going to tell God? What am I going to tell God? My son has a purpose. He has to be healthy to fulfill that purpose. What he eats is up to me. I tell parents, if you don't buy it, they won't eat it. If you don't teach them how to eat it, they won't know how to eat it. The reason they prefer noodles is because you gave them noodles to eat. If they've never tasted noodles, they will not be asking for noodles. You are responsible for what they eat. Some of you will say, but my child will not eat this. Is, he, is that child your parent? Is that child the adult? See, it all depends on how you raise that child. My son has learned, he does, if I tell him it's this, it's not as if I don't make things he wants sometimes, but I always make the healthier version, the healthy version of what he wants. But at the same time, when I'm not making it, I'll tell him whatever I give you, you eat it. It's not up for discussion. Whatever I give you, you eat. Teach them to eat vegetables. Teach them to eat uh, uh, fruits. Many of us is because we do not want the stress. That's why we give in to their demands. But remember, you are going to answer to God. Someone is asking, how do we adjust the children's taste board? By starting, number one, by clearing the house of everything that is not right. If it's not at home, they won't eat it. I keep telling you, stop buying it. That's the number one thing. Stop buying it. And then start making sure that you eat these healthy options that are around the house. Put apple on the table. Put banana there. Let them be walking by up and down and seeing it. A time will come, they will pick it and eat it. They might eat half and drop it away. But yes, they will still come back to it later. Make sure that the only thing they see to, 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 to snack on are only healthy options. Make sure they do not even have access to unhealthy options if you do not have biscuit in your house they will not eat biscuit it's as simple as that stop buying it for them as an option and then start you too you have to learn how to cook these foods in a delicious way because you can't be telling your time every time you or your child every time you can't eat burger you can't eat burger i won't give you burger learn how to make healthy burger they are children after all we shouldn't be so stern on them to the point that we push them in the opposite direction, direction that the moment they are away from us, they now go haywire for the unhealthy ones. No, give them the healthy option. Teach them. Our, norm, our foods are healthy. Gary is healthy. Amala is healthy. Rice is healthy. Beans is healthy. It's how you cook it that matters. What are you using to cook it? How are you cooking it? You understand? Let them know these things and get them involved in the cooking. There are recipes on my page on every single one of my social media pages. There's, there are recipes on my Instagram, on my YouTube, on my Facebook, on my TikTok Lagos Housewife on every social media is the same name, the same handle on every social media. Watch them. Learn how to make these things. All are made with natural ingredients. 
learn it. Start giving and get them involved in the cooking and teach them. I, I told people, I tell people, parents, you can't just tell your child, eat this. Explain to them. They understand. Explain to them why this is unhealthy. Why the, There are some of my people who follow me that whenever I have a healthy eating teaching, they watch it together with their children. And that way the children are learning. One sent me a video recently, about two weeks ago, where she actually bought something unhealthy. She said she was so tired and she was thinking, oh, I don't have energy to cook. So when she was coming back from work, she bought something unhealthy. She said immediately she carried it inside. Her son immediately told her, ah, mommy, Lagos housewife said we should not be eating this. So that is not healthy. Why did you buy it? And, you know, she did a video and told the son to repeat it. And the son repeated it. Lagos housewife said we should not be eating this. That is not healthy. You see that? And then she was. She now told the son, okay, I'm tired. What are we going to make? And then they went to my page and looked through for something simple and fast they could make. And they made it together. You see that? See, when children, I, I love something about children. When they know something, ah, they are so fervent about it. It's we adults that will still be doing up and down like this. But children, ah, they are so fervent about it. So teach your children. Let them know. When children know better, they actually take the better option. Don't just say, no, don't drink Coke. Don't just say you won't give them uh, minerals to school. Explain to them why. My son became the health, uh, health uh, prefect in primary school. Why? Because he was always teaching them about healthy eating. And when the time came to choose health prefect, everybody was like, ah, you should be the one that should be the health prefect. You see that? You see that? They learn. And the Lord will continue to help us in Jesus' name. I think I've overshot my time. <laughs> you should know when it comes to healthy eating, I'm so passionate. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, in fact, we are just drinking in everything you are saying. We are just drinking in, I mean, the kind of revelations that we have gotten here today or tonight is amazing. So, um, okay, there's a question here. Explain to your children. Okay, it's not a question. Explain to your yes. children why something is not healthy. Exactly. I mean, you yes. have hit the nail on the head so many times. And you have really simplified it. You started with, you know, the why, which is very important because, yes. um, you know, nobody wants to be sick. And we need to take responsibility. I mean, uh, Bishop David Oedeko says something uh, that any faith that makes God fully responsible is an irresponsible faith. Yes. The fact that God has said, you know, we are not the sick trying to be strong, but we are the strong maintaining our health doesn't mean that we now take in everything, you know, that passes, you know, in front of us. It doesn't mean that we now uh, become very slack and treat our bodies anyhow. So you started with the why, and then you came with revelations that cannot be easily forgotten. Wow. Thank you so much, ma'am. <laughs> oh, my God. In fact, at a point, I was just blowing in tongues because I could not contain it. Like... You know, and the Holy Spirit is so awesome. You know, he's closer to us even than our skin. Sometimes yes. we, we push him far away and make him look like he's only interested in the religious or spiritual things. But he's so interested in everything we do on a daily basis, even to the clothes that we wear. And yes. even to the gadgets in your kitchen. My God. In fact, as you were speaking, I was just doing a mental note. Okay, bread maker, everything that I need to, you know, update my kitchen with. Wow. Eudora said, I cannot even comment because this table shaking fell on me. And you know what? My husband is right here with me and he, he just passed a compliment to me. Oh my God, I'm going to say that. I feel good about <laughs> it. And he said, ah, oh, sweetheart, thank you. You know, because, you know, there are some things that you would not find in my fridge. Most times, yes. things like fizzy drinks are really scarce in my house. And sometimes when I get asked, it's like, ah, is it that you are stingy? Or, but, you know, I just can't have them. Because when they are there, everybody will be tempted to take those yes. things. And this morning, I, I remember I made 
some green juice, like pure green juice. And you know, Sandra then will say, oh, what is this? But I took it and it tasted so good. And then yes. my husband got back and I gave him, I was like, oh, sweetheart, this thing is nice. I was just laughing in my mind. I said, if you know the concussion that I mixed into this thing. <laughs> you know, so like you said, these things are very important. And there was something that really hit me about Elijah. You know, Elijah was taken up, but Elisha, who had a double portion, still ended up dying as a sick man. I mean, that is the take home for me. For every one of us on this show tonight, and for everyone who's going to, you know, listen to the replay, please, she said so many things. I'm going to read out a few. We are nourished by the earth. We are nourished by nature. And the less processed food we eat, the better for us. On a daily basis, we are either nurturing our body or we are killing it. And so the choice is really us. This is a wake up call for everybody. My voice has even gone down. It is a solemn moment. <laughs> it's a solemn moment for us all. So um, I know that after this session, we are going to go back as parents. We are going to take stock of the things that we have in our country, in our kitchen. We are going to look into how we prepare these meals. When you were talking about bread, oh my God, it is well. Anyways, you have shared so much value with us. But there's a question that I'm going to ask you before you okay. leave. That Holy Spirit spice. Yes. <laughs> Please, can you just... Because I know, I know that our viewers will run to your page. I know for sure. But please, can you just give us uh, a brief summary of how we can prepare? She has a spice, and the inspiration to create that spice was given by the Holy Spirit. So she's going to, you know, just give us a brief summary of how we can put that together. You can use it to prepare practically any meal. Yes. So any please, meal. for a few minutes, just uh, let us know how to go about that. Okay. So I call it Holy Spirit Spice because it came about when I was asking God, you know, a lot of people were asking me what substitute can they use for seasoning cubes, what substitute. So I'd been praying about it that God, what substitute, what substitute. So that particular night I was, I was sleeping and then I just woke up and these ingredients were right in my head with exact mm -hmm. measurements as in... It was just, I, I can't even explain it. It was just so vivid. And I jumped up and immediately wrote it down, wrote it down, wrote it down hmm. with exact measurement and with exact explanation of how to do it. So I wrote it down. And then in the morning when uh, I now woke up and I, I now woke up, I gave it to my girl. I said, please go and buy these things for me. And then I brought them together. I put them in the blender, dry meal blender. And you know, I was now looking as in, okay, maybe there's a way I can also tweak it. I actually wanted to add another ingredient. And as I picked something, the Holy Spirit told me, I didn't give you that ingredient. <laughs> so wow. I generally dropped it, only what he gave. And I make, and I blended it. And the aroma that came out, I went to show my husband. I said, see this. I was like, ah, this smells so nice. It tastes so nice. I used it to cook that day and everybody was wowed. You know, mm. because the, most of the ingredients in it were like native ingredients, I actually felt it was for native cooking alone. And so when I came out with it, I said it's the native spice and everything can be used for your native food. But then the next thing was I started receiving messages from people saying they used it for fried rice, they used it for jollof rice, they used it for egg, they used it for moi moi, they used it to do barbecue. And I was like, wow. And then I started trying it with jollof rice and fried rice. And I was amazed. Someone told me, she said, Lagos housewife, this recipe, this spice is truly from the Holy Spirit. She said, no matter what you use it to cook, it's like it adapts to the taste of that mm. thing. And then someone pointed out, said Lagos also, did you notice the seven ingredients? Mm. Said exactly seven ingredients. I don't remember though. I wanted to add an eighth one, and the Holy Spirit told me mm. I didn't give you that. You know, so many things about it. It was actually even coming from other sources. So uh let me give you the ingredients. So this is for a single spice jar. 
this was the ingredient. If anybody is writing it down now, it's a uh, one tablespoon of black pepper seeds, black normal black pepper, one tablespoon, one tablespoon of uziza, uziza seed, not the leaves, the seed, one tablespoon of uziza seed, one tablespoon of alligator pepper seed, one tablespoon of alligator pepper seed. Then uda, we know uda, three pieces of uda, remove the seed, use only the peels. The back, okay. Uh, use only the back, remove the seed. Then three pieces of bonga fish. Three pieces of bonga fish, not the big one, you can just get the small, small ones that they sell. I think they sell it like a part, a bundle for like 200, just use three of it. Then two pieces, just two pieces of dawa dawa. That's the flat black iru. If you don't have the flat black iru, just use any dry iru. It's basically just iru. It's the process of fermentation that separates the dawa dawa from the regular iru, just the process. And then nutmeg seeds, two whole nutmeg. Regular nutmeg that is used for baking, not the mm. calabash nutmeg, the regular nutmeg. Two whole seeds. And those are the seven ingredients. Put mm. them together, blend them smooth, put them in a jar, and you can be using them to cook every food. You do not need more than one teaspoon at a time. Some people will pile it plenty. No, you don't need plenty. One teaspoon at a time. And of course, there are other various things you can also use. Like we have the garlic, ginger, and onion paste that you blend together. There's the green paste, which is a mixture of, uh, uh, what do they call it? scent leaves that is a farin chow uh spring onion stalks the green parts not the onions itself and then the green bell pepper remove all the seed the seed can make it bitter so remove the seed and then you can maybe just add a little bit of yellow chili to it just for the aroma not for the peppery taste and just blend it together equal quantity of green pepper spring onion stalks and scent leaves equal quantity a little bit of yellow chili blend it together that forms a paste we call it the green paste it is amazing in food mm. so many different ways on my page everything i make is with natural ingredients everything mm. i make so you can check my pages for recipe ideas and the holy spirit will continue to help us all Wow, wow. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now, before I let you go, one more. Uh, someone said, Idora said, please tell us options uh, to replace the packed juice. Okay, as I told you, the best option is let them eat the fruit with the fiber. Because the moment you extract the juice, you are removing the fiber. Sugar mm. is not meant to go into the body, no matter how healthy the sugar, as I told you, it's not meant to go into the body without fiber. But mm. in the absence of that, sometimes you can it cannot be avoided. That's why I have a juice, I actually have a juice maker. Like sometimes during birthday festive occasions, and they want something sweet to drink, you can simply juice your apple, juice your orange, juice your pineapple, your watermelon, things like that. And then if you do not have a juice extractor, you can use your blender. The only thing is that any juice you use your blender to do, you have to sieve it and you can't keep it for a long time because that speed of the, of the blender, it degrades the nutrients. It actually degrades the nutrients. So they are not, uh, it's not really recommended, but you can do that. There's also the option of tiger nut milk. There's also the option of coconut milk. There's almond milk. If you want to sweeten them, use dates. Simply blend it with dates and sieve it. Dates is an awesome, awesome natural seasoning. Uh, sorry, natural uh, sweetener. I use dates a lot. In fact, my dates now, I use dates paste. I don't just extract the syrup. The dates paste, I blend everything together so that the fiber can still be inside there. We use it for pap. We use it uh, for our uh, Greek yogurt to make parfait, to sweeten it, and things like that. So that's just the replacement for uh, packed juice. But it's better to teach your children to eat the whole fruits together. 
Wow. Thank you so much, Lagos Housewife. Auntie Rayo, thank you for such an expository session. Somebody said, thank you so much, ma. Many things will visit my dustbin <laughs> tomorrow morning. Okay. <laughs> Oh, and that is, that's, you know, that's, uh, that's joy for me because one of the things that, uh, one of the goals of this conference is to jolt us back to reality, you know, such that we are able to make a U-turn from the things that are not really helping us as parents, all right, things that would, um, you know, cause problems in the future. And I'm so glad that you are making that decision to, Clear out your kitchen cabinet. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Auntie Rayo. It's been so Thank great you. having you with us. God bless and replenish you in Jesus' Amen. name. So please, Amen. everybody, rush to at Lagos Housewife and let's get the healthy lifestyle rolling. All right. So let me let you go now, ma'am. Thank okay. you. Okay. Good night, everyone. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wow. Wow, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. That was so good. Hmm. That was so good. I mean, it's a wake-up call. It's an awakening, you know, for everybody to go back and do what we got to do. Because, you know, really, everything we do is a seed that is being sown. So you indulge your children with everything you feel they need or everything their taste bud is craving for and then five six ten eleven twelve years down the line problems are looming we don't want to do that to our children if we really love them as much as we say we do then we need to step into our office as parents and do what we got to do she said something very profound she said she is the parent, not the child. So it's in her place to command the child. Bishop said something on Sunday. He said, parents, we are not here. You're not here to joke with your children. You should command them. Some things are not up for negotiation. You know, and she said that as well. So when it comes to meals, all right, we are supposed to be the ones to say, okay, this is what is good for you. And I pray that the grace to be able to function in that office and do what we really need to do is released in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We have three power pack sessions. I have been so empowered and blessed. I hope to see you tomorrow. Tomorrow we are going to be talking. What are we talking about tomorrow? Um, so we are going to share the schedule. All right. I think I've missed up the sessions, but we have just um two sessions tomorrow, one at 3 to 4 p.m. And we have another at uh, 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. I hope to see you there. Please like the video, share the video so that other people can listen to what we have encountered tonight. God bless you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Please, parents, let's evangelize by sharing this video to every Christian group. Yes, she mentioned it earlier before she started that God says we, his children, does not understand this insight. And that is so true. That is so true. She, she said that, you know, um, we don't understand that we are supposed to nourish ourselves like our nourishment shouldn't be far from the earth. And so we, we that have heard all of these things, we see that. It is deep insight and people need to also encounter this insight. So I'll see you all tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. Please share the video. Thank you so much. And God bless you. Father, we give you praise for uh, the beautiful sessions we had today. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> There's an outpouring of abundance, of abundance, new doors have been opened, the land, it is green, and 
new grace has been released. The glory, the glory of the latter is greater than the former. The blessing is here. It's all here. Lift up your hands, God. The glory of the latter is greater than the former. The blessing is here. It's all here. All here. There's a love of love. 